yeah so what uh, we will be doing is not just behavioralism we will be doing several other things that uh, fall under the category of uh, political analysis and uh, as an introduction to behavioralism uh we will have to first and foremost we will have to know what is empiricism which is what we did the other day so i'll briefly rush over that uh then here comes the most interesting but we have to do that which is called uh behaviorism okay which is uh yeah as an int intro is introduction i am sure you know i don't have to tell you uh behavioralism uh came into being because of uh well uh, what do we say because of uh behaviorism uh behaviorism itself uh is uh, this probably doesn't need this yeah um so freudian uh, psychoanalysis usually if i'm not mistaken it is uh, something that is written with uh, a hyphen but i think uh the new protocol is that you shouldn't write it uh with uh, with a hyphen because then psycho itself as a uh meaning uh, sorry as a shortened uh, uh 
form of psychosis or psychotic has a derogatory meaning. Uh, I don't know you if you people have seen that uh, Alfred Hitchcock uh, film called Psycho. Uh, has anyone seen it? Have you heard of it? Yes, sir. We had. I had. Sir. You heard of it? The same. The same. Uh, same based on the film. Tamil film also came, sir. Psycho. Uh, Miskin character. Sorry. I mean, uh, one of the Tamil director, Miskin, oh, uh, he inspired oh, okay. the Alfred Hitchcock uh, psycho. He was so inspired that's why by. Yeah, about, about. He was inspired by. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Actually, yes. I think you should try and uh, uh, find that film uh, on YouTube or uh, or any of uh, the other ones, Netflix. I don't know if it has Netflix. Uh, what we're not getting such good stuff out here in India, um, both on net Netflix and Prime Video. Uh, some most of these classics are missing there. Uh, so Psycho, you should have a, you should see that movie. Uh, made by Alfred Hitchcock, whose genius lay in making these films with such inferior technology, unbelievably inferior technology, uh, but with devastating effect. Uh, two films like that of uh, Hitchcock's are uh, Psycho, which had Anthony Perkins uh, in the lead role. I've forgotten what is what. What Bates is he? B A T E S. He some Bates, uh, and he was brilliant as uh, what Bates is he? Anyway, uh, that is a movie and another movie which is almost scary uh, when you actually see it is a movie called Birds. Uh, I'm, I, I saw it a long time ago. I'm searching for it, not getting it. I, uh, I'll have to keep searching, I guess. So... So psycho actually stands for uh, various negative things and psychoanalysis, when it is written with a hyphen, uh, there seem to have been this uh, uh, objection that uh, you're analyzing somebody who is a psycho. Okay. Uh, but that is not the root of the word. The root of the whole thing. Uh, today you also have what are called psychotherapists in America as opposed to um, uh, psych psychiatrists because psychiatrists are, they have to be uh, MBBS doctors and uh, then they have to specialize in uh, mental health. Uh, so you have psychiatrists who are general psychiatrists, and you also have those who are called neuropsychiatrists, uh, who are a blend of both uh, neurology and psychiatry. Funnily enough, it's the British who pronounce uh, this word.
the British pronounce this word as psychiatrist. And the Americans, of course, have to do everything the opposite way. So they say psychiatrist, which is what we say in India, not because we are following Americans, but we just do it, right? Uh, anyway, so psychoanalysis of the Freudian variety uh, was trying to understand uh, why people behave the way they do. Okay, uh, I don't want to go into the whole this thing of the psycho bit, uh, but uh, I'll just leave it at that. <clears throat> Maybe if we have time later on, we can talk about why psycho. Okay. Why was that used even before psychology came up as a discipline? There was psychoanalysis uh, and it was done by Freud. Uh, it was also done by Wilhelm Reich. Have you heard of these people? Yes, sir. Everybody would have heard of Sigmund Freud. Who hasn't heard of Sigmund Freud? Who's heard of Reich? Akshay, you heard of Reich as well? Yes, sir. You did say. Oh, I only said. Thanks. Okay. Uh, Wilhelm Reich actually wrote this wonderful book. Please try to find it if you can. It's called The Mass Psychology of... Uh, fascism okay uh, so that is one of his very very defining works Wilhelm Reich uh, and uh, he also wrote another book called character analysis uh, in which he basically uh, talks about how people's characters uh, uh, develop into whatever uh, form based on their childhood experiences uh, which have to do with uh, urination, defecation uh, and those kind of things. How those Toilet habits uh, actually, uh, he says, uh, lead to uh, a certain kind of character formation. And of course, you know, Sigmund Freud. Sigmund uh, Freud is uh, somebody who believed in the idea that it is uh, the sexuality of a person that determines his, her character behavior. Uh, but he also went beyond all that. And he believes that uh, it is sexuality that uh, leads to something like uh, what do we say? Uh, sexuality le leads to uh, the origin of religion. Okay, he talks about that. And uh, most of his analysis of insecurities 
is that which is linked to the desire of the people to return back to the womb, the security of the womb of the mother. So that is what he says is the reason why people have insecurities and uh, uh, looking for security. And I don't know if you have noticed, whenever people are insecure, they fold up and lie down on their side and fold their legs right up their abdomen which is going into a fetal position. Now, Freud was a medical doctor and uh, he, while being an intern, uh, please don't think that I'm wasting your time here telling you this, okay? I'm not. This is a part of uh, the introduction to behavioralism. Uh, okay, please remember this. I'm not wasting your time. So Freud says, why do people fold up like that? Uh, and that is supposed to be give people, even a grown adult does that. Uh, People do that because uh, it's that security that you enjoyed in uh, mother's womb uh, while you were in that position, the fetal position. Okay, the fetus is always like that, isn't it? So Freud therefore links things and you have uh, various uh, concepts that Freud talked about. Uh, the ones that are uh, famous are the Oedipus complex and the Electra complex. Um, uh, has anyone heard of these? Oedipus complex and Electra complex? No, sir. I hope it is uh, hmm. attraction towards uh, opposite gender. Opposite gender? Then that's not a complex. A complex is uh, usually something which is in the nature of, uh, mm, what should we say? Uh, a complicated thing to explain. Uh, that which requires a complicated explanation, uh, just an opposite attraction to gender is, is normal. Uh, though, if you ask Freud, he would say the Oedipus complex and the Electra complex are also uh, normal. Oedipus complex, he took the name from the Greek play Oedipus Rex, 
O E D E P O S E D P O S R E X R E X. Ah, well, the story of E D P O S R E X. I'm not going to tell you the whole story, so don't worry. I'll tell you the what is the most important part. Oedipus uh, is kind of uh, alienated from his mother. It's a Greek play, okay? Uh, written in the good old ancient Greek times, uh, and. Uh, Oedipus uh, grows up separately uh, from his mother, who I'm not very clear here, uh, who I think becomes some kind of a prostitute, and uh, Oedipus. Without knowing that he is having sex with his mother, actually ends up having sex with his mother, and that is how uh, Freud actually. I mean, that's what happens in the novel. Okay, that uh, Oedipus basically. Uh, without knowing has sex with his mother and the mother also doesn't know that this is his son till a little later so oedipus complex is the attraction not any attraction some kind of a sexual attraction uh that a male child feels for his mother it is a jocasta it seems sir name of the mother jocasta name of the mother okay all right uh right so um, yeah so so he says they feel a uh, sexual urge towards their own mothers and uh, this is uh repressed because uh he claims morality is uh, absolutely the creation of human society both ethics and morals uh, so he says given the moral structures of human society uh, this instinct of an attraction a sexual attraction to the mother is something that is repressed okay uh, the child uh, only learns how to repress it over uh, many centuries he says that has happened and uh, electra complex is the exact opposite of uh, oedipus complex um electra complex is not derived out of any particular uh, play or anything like that but electra is uh, one of the uh, i think she is a part of the pantheon of uh, Greek gods and uh, uh, Electra complex is the attraction uh, that a girl child 
feels for uh, her father. So ultimately, Freud theorized that uh, the Oedipus complex uh, will make a, a, a boy look for a girl who has the character traits of his mother uh, to be his wife. And uh, similarly, uh, Electra complex is where girls look for men uh, who are like their fathers uh, to be their life partners or husbands. So that is how he theorized. And then there are other things which he says that uh, girls feel what is called a penal envy. A penal envy is not having the male uh, reproductive organ, which is a penis. Uh, incidentally, I don't know how many of you are aware of this. When we talk about the penal code, uh, which is used in the context of punishments, P-E-N-A-L, penal code. That is something that is derived out of the word penis. Okay. Uh, and another occasion on, at another time, I'll tell you why that happened. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> he also says that there is a reciprocation. Usually mothers like their uh, male children more and fathers dote on their daughters. Uh, that's what uh, is claimed by uh, Freud. And you'll find these kind of things being a uh, being uh, uh, further extrapolated in uh, Wilhelm Reich's uh, character analysis. Now, a penal envy comes from the fact that uh, women cannot urinate standing, according to Freud and uh, <clears throat> but uh, this Sorry about that. I know what's happening. This is happening on a regular basis. Yeah, so he looks at most of civilizational practices, most of social practices uh, from the point of view of uh, the repression of the sexual instincts. Okay. Uh, the repression of the sexual instincts is what he says is the reason why civilization grew in the way it did. And uh, 
religion for him is uh, an outcome of this repression uh, he believes that uh, when he is talking about religion he is talking about christianity mainly or only uh, religion for him the insecurity bit again goes back to the womb okay the desire to return to the womb but you can't return to the womb so to speak and uh, therefore uh, religion is for him a source of reassurance and uh, comfort from the insecurity that we feel on a daily basis so for him god is the invention of man and you know by saying that there is a supreme power that is taking care of us uh the supreme power is in charge of our well being all these things are nothing but uh, our attempts to tell ourselves that we have nothing to fear we probably don't have anything to fear but he says the trauma of birth which is leaving the uh, womb of the mother and coming out into the world uh is in itself a lifelong trauma it's there with you throughout life it creates various kinds of in uh uh insecurities and uh fears complexes all these things which uh are called uh deviant psychology psychology please remember is a 20th century uh discipline what existed before that was only uh some kind of a fundamentality of human nature argument uh what is fundamentality of human nature uh this particular argument is that all people have a certain kind of uh, what do we say character traits that are common to every single individual okay character traits that are absolutely common to every single individual is the one that uh, uh is what um uh becomes uh what was i saying character trait 
Yeah, uh, they, they are, uh, I don't know, that, that phone is disturbing me. Uh, yes, uh, the characters, uh, traits which are common to all, uh, that is called fundamentality of human nature. Okay, so every single individual will have character traits uh, which are common to all. So if you ask Thomas Hobbes, uh, who was, who later writers, especially Indians, talk about having spoken about a phil about a psychology there is no psychology in uh, there is no psychology in Hobbes what we find in Hobbes is uh, this particular thing which is a fundamentality of human nature which is described as human nature is something uh, that seeks pleasures and avoids pain. So he says there are two drives, two drives that uh, basically govern human behavior, all human behavior. And uh, one drive is the drive towards pleasure and the other drive is uh, the drive away uh, from pain. Okay, okay. And this particular argument, when I do your Western political thought paper, when I do utilitarians, you will see that the utilitarianism is borrowed entirely on this fundamentality of human nature, uh, uh, which is uh, what they call um, uh, the what, which is what they say should be the basis for legislation. It should maximize the pleasures of the maximum number of people and it should also minimize the pains of the maximum number of people. So this maximizing of pain as uh, a sorry pleasure and minimizing of pain actually uh, also has something to do with uh, Freud. Uh, when later utilitarians created either this, some people call it the Maximin principle. and others, other utilitarians, let me put that there. Other utilitarians call uh, Minimax. There's a huge debate about which is better, Maximin or Minimax. I personally uh, like to go with Maximin rather than with Minimax. Uh, purely for semantic logic, which is you're trying to maximize first and through maximization, or pleasure you're minimizing. Okay, so uh, 
that is the reason why uh, I prefer Maximin. That is, in fact, the original construct. I think the Americans changed it to Minimax later on. Anyway, now what people call deviant psychology for Freud is not deviant psychology. In fact, for him, there is nothing deviant uh, in any form of human behavior unless and until it takes on a violent form and becomes a threat to society. Okay. Uh, so when he wrote on religion, uh, what he basically uh, talked about is that the security that is generated uh, in a religious uh, the security that is generated through Okay, so that is what he says, that there is a supernatural power taking care of us, gives us a certain sense of security, following the rules and laws that are ascribed to the supernatural power. Uh, those are the ones that uh, give us a certain sense of security and uh, church-going communities uh, foster relationships between people where they usually help each other out uh, in different uh, times of need. So all those things he says are the ones that give some kind of comfort from insecurity. And uh, he will, and if you look at uh, Reich, Reich, while he's writing the character analysis, he is writing about particular character traits that uh, are, uh, you know, that people acquire uh, due to a certain kind of uh, life and upbringing that they have had, especially the toilet habits. Uh, but he is not somebody who stops there. He also, like Freud uh, goes on to write about how obedience is inculcated in 
human beings because of their insecurities. Okay, how obedience is uh, uh, inculcated in people because of their insecurities. I think I told you what he said exactly in the mass psychology of fascism. This is during the Great Economic Depression. And yes, yeah, so just let me finish it, repeat it once in a line. It is during the Great Economic Depression and there were all these bakeries and food stalls that had cakes, pastries and various types of goodies laid out. Uh, but yet, hungry people, people literally dying of hunger, didn't, it didn't occur to them that they should go and break the glasses because the food is being displayed break the glass and take the food and eat it. That is because he says that we have a tendency, we have a tendency to follow uh, what somebody else is doing. Okay, so very rarely and this is what Eric Fromm also calls the fear of responsibility. Okay, he says there is freedom, but people are afraid to use their freedom because freedom doesn't come without responsibility. Right, and people are afraid of taking responsibility. And that is the reason why you can have the rise of leaders like Mussolini. You can have the rise of leaders such as uh, Hitler, all these people. So psychiatry, which is older than psychology, uh, it was then actually called psychoanalysis, uh, but now it is called psych psychiatry. So it's older than psychology. Uh, this basically takes certain character traits. It takes certain character traits and builds what are called
Well, <clears throat> I've told you uh, what uh, um, this is a fundamentality of uh, human nature. Uh, this particular, uh, uh, yeah, sorry, not behavior. I told you in the morning that this is there even in Aristotle, uh, some rudimentary form of fundamentality of human nature. It is also there in Machiavelli, <clears throat> the fundamentality of uh, human nature. Uh, and it is there in Hobbes and later on in the entire utilitarian tradition, uh, especially the later parts. Now the grand theories that uh, we are talking about. What is a grand theory? A grand theory is an umbrella theory that explains many different things. Okay, so psychiatry or the original psychoanalysis tried to build a grand theory of why human beings behave the way they do by identifying certain basic character traits and extrapolating those into society and saying that because of these traits, finding their way into society in a particular form, you have human civilization or human society going in one direction. That is the grand theory. Okay, grand theory is not done only by psychoanalysis. Grand theory is also done by, if you say, uh, Rawlsian theory of justice is also a grand theory because he says it's universal. A grand theory, please remember, is universal. Anything that lays claim to universality through its explanation is a grand theory. So psychiatry and psychoanalysis were grand theories. Whereas if you look at psychology, psychology broke away. Psychology broke away from uh, Freudian psychoanalysis and psychiatry and concentrated on individual behavior. It, it concentrated on individual behavior uh, rather than attempting a grand theory. And that is why that particular movement came to be called behaviorism. Uh, I have to go for another meeting now. So I'll stop here today. And tomorrow we'll have a brief uh, discussion of behaviorism and hyperfactualism and how that led to uh, the recasting of it in social sciences as behavioralism. Okay. So thank you very much. And I'm sorry I'm ending this meeting a bit abruptly. Mm -hmm. I will uh, see you tomorrow morning. Okay, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you.